Hi, I'm glad you could join me today. I'm in the book of Proverbs today. Uh, again, I have finished a portion of the, um, the historical books, and I will be starting those again at a different uh, at a different time. But I'm using this particular time to read through some of the wisdom literature. We read through Job in another time during my uh, devotions. I read through Psalms. But today I want our meditation to come from the book of Proverbs. Now, Proverbs is a very fascinating book. As you understand, it is uh, uh, the wisdom of Solomon. And uh, later on, another of the wisdom literature is the book of Ecclesiastes, where he speaks about life under the sun in this particular world. Now, Proverbs isn't only talking about life in this world but it does give a lot of practical advice of how we manage things in this particular world. I'm in the book of Proverbs chapter 17 today, and in the 15th verse, it speaks to much of what we see going on in our society today. It says that the one who justifies the wicked and the one who condemns the righteous They are alike, and they're an abomination to the Lord. The Lord expects righteousness in his people. We live in a day where righteousness is not a commodity that we uh, we value, but that's what the Lord values. And so we see a lot of people today who are, excuse me, willing to justify the wicked, and who will condemn the righteous because in their minds they don't see any cosmic force that is over all of this world. There's no cosmic entity. There is no one to whom they will one day give an account. But the truth is that the scripture speaks that there is that greater power that is going to one day bring everyone to an account. So there are many people who think that the ends justify the means, that if I can accomplish my ends by justifying the wicked, no one's going to know, no, no one's going to be the wiser. If I can condemn the righteous in order to get my way, no one's going to be the wiser. But the bottom line is that God himself is watching, and he will condemn both of these practices. They are an abomination to him. One of the things that I regularly pray for as I pray for the nation is that the Lord would bless those who have sworn to uphold and defend our Constitution, and that he would bless those that actually do it. But there are many in our, in our world, the many in our uh, government leadership at all levels who have taken these vows and it's only just been a perfunctory uh, ritual that they've gone through. They have no intention of upholding the, uh, the text of that constitution that they have sworn to uphold. And those are the people that I pray that the Lord would destroy. Now, please let me pause a moment and say, I am not asking God to bring fire and brimstone down and destroy eternally these people. But if he would destroy them politically, financially, in some way to get their attention, so that one day they'll understand that they're going to stand before him and give an account before him, that's merciful. They're going to do that, whether they come to that understanding or not on this side of eternity. But in his mercy, I pray, Lord, destroy them on this side of eternity so that they'll recognize who you are in, on the other side. We sometimes sing a song that has been written in recent years called, There is a Higher Throne. And indeed, there is. That that throne is the one that each person one day will stand before to give an account. 
And so those who justify the wicked, those who condemn the righteous, will stand before the Lord one day because these things are an abomination to him. Now please understand that even if you don't justify the wicked and condemn the righteous, you're going to stand before the Lord one day also. And hopefully he's going to say to each, each of us, well done, good and faithful servant. You're, you are, are ones who uh, have faithfully followed me and my will. And so hopefully that's going to be the case with us. But for those who justify the wicked and condemn the righteous in this generation, my prayer is that the Lord would destroy them so that in his mercy they may understand who he is and, and, um, and, and, give, and know that they will give an account and come to know him. Father, we ask you to do that right now. For those in our society, whether in our government or in other places in society, who condemn the wicked and justify, excuse me, who condemn the righteous and justify the wicked, I pray, Father, that you would make them see that they will stand before you one day. This is not a, a, a prayer of, uh, of retribution and imprecation. It is a prayer of mercy. And I ask you, Father, to provide for them. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day.